Have you ever come across an old classic movie from 1944 that takes you on a gripping journey? Picture this, a group of individuals finds themselves stranded in a lifeboat after their ship is sunk by a German U-boat during World War II. What makes this movie intriguing is its portrayal of human nature in extreme situations. You witness a mix of emotions, trust, betrayal, courage, and fear all unfolding within the confines of that tiny boat. The characters in the story each have their own unique background and struggles, making them stand out in their own right. Who among them captures your attention the most? As you watch the events unfold, it's hard not to wonder what would you do if you were in their shoes. The movie keeps you hooked with its blend of humor, shock, and sadness, leaving you contemplating long after the credits roll. If you have any personal experiences or memories related to this classic film, we'd love to hear them. Share your stories with us in the comments below. So, keep watching for more interesting facts about this timeless piece of cinema. It's a true gem from the past that still resonates today. You won't want to miss it. In the heart of the Atlantic Ocean, amid the turmoil of World War II, a German U-boat ruthlessly sinks a vessel carrying peace-loving American and British civilians. Eight souls find themselves adrift on a small lifeboat, their fates intertwined in a struggle for survival. Among them is a world-weary columnist named Constance Connie Porter, impeccably portrayed by Taula Bankhead, exuding glamour even amidst the chaos. John Kovac, played by the heroically handsome John Hodiak, stands as a beacon of strength and wisdom, his past as a Chicago slaughterhouse worker adding depth to his character. As the tension rises, the survivors are joined by a ninth member, a suspicious-looking Nazi sailor named Willie, portrayed with chilling realism by Walter Slezak. Through their interactions, the film serves as a stark reminder of the perils of war, cautioning against blind trust and the dangers of prejudice. Based on an original story by John Steinbeck, the dialogue possesses a timeless quality, echoing the author's narrative style. Despite the diverse backgrounds of the characters, they collectively represent the American immigrant experience, with nods to the complexities of nationality and identity. Alfred Hitchcock's masterful direction keeps viewers engaged, seamlessly weaving together disparate personalities and ideologies against the backdrop of the vast ocean. His subtle cameo serves as a testament to his unparalleled skill in storytelling. In the end, Lifeboat transcends its wartime propaganda roots, offering a nuanced portrayal of humanity's resilience and moral ambiguity in the face of adversity. In the realm of classic cinema, there exists a remarkable collaboration between a celebrated director and a renowned author. Despite facing rejection initially, this dynamic duo forged ahead, determined to create something unforgettable. Their joint effort resulted in a gripping tale set against the backdrop of World War II. The refusal of the initial script and the unique musical approach only served to underscore the director's commitment to pushing boundaries. Crafted with precision and driven by a compelling narrative, this movie stands as a testament to their creative partnership. Its impact continues to endure, captivating audiences with its intense storyline and masterful suspense. Indeed, it remains a remarkable achievement in the world of cinema. Arthur C. Miller began as director of photography for the movie, but due to illness, Glenn McWilliams took over after two weeks of filming. Heather Angel, who played Mistress Higley, had previously portrayed Ethel the maid in a different Alfred Hitchcock film. In a scene, Rittenhouse mistakenly called Joe George, a common nickname for black attendants derived from Pullman passenger trains black servants, named after the owner George Pullman. Joe corrected him, preferring to be addressed by his real name. In 1950, Screen Directors Playhouse aired a radio adaptation of the film, featuring Tyler LeBankhead in her original role. The 60-minute broadcast on November 16 marked a revisit to the gripping narrative. Filming of the movie took place entirely within the studio, where lifeboats were strategically positioned in two setups. One involved a studio tank, with the boat secured by underwater wires, surrounded by water chutes on all four sides fed by 4,000-gallon tanks. For specific scenes, a lifeboat was suspended above rollers, mimicking the boat's movements on simulated waves. As production began, Mary Anderson, seeking advice from Sir Alfred Hitchcock, inquired about her best side. Hitchcock, in his characteristic dry humor, responded, You're sitting on it, my dear. This behind-the-scenes insight into the making of the film offers a glimpse into the technical aspects and the director's witty interactions with the cast. It's a testament to the meticulous craftsmanship that went into creating the tension-filled drama. Ranked 10th on the National Board of Review's annual 10 Best List, the 1944 movie featured Taula Bankhead in a standout role. 
Her portrayal of the cynical journalist Constance Porter earned critical acclaim and commercial success, with many hailing it as her best on film. Despite high expectations of an Oscar nomination, Bank had settled for the New York Film Critics Award as the Best Actress of the Year. In her acceptance, a delighted Bank had declared, Darlings, I was wonderful. During the filming, Alfred Hitchcock shared an amusing anecdote about Mary Anderson, noting her aspirations to become a film star. Hitchcock recalled discovering her unconventional method of enhancing her figure with tissues. When Anderson inquired about her best side, Hitchcock humorously replied, You're sitting on it, my dear. These anecdotes provide a glimpse into the dynamics behind the scenes, shedding light on the movie's critical success and memorable performances. The film's recognition on the National Board of Reviews list and Bankhead's acclaimed role underscore the significance of Lifeboat in cinematic history. William Bendix joined the cast a few days into shooting when the original actor cast as Gus fell ill. Production finished in November with a budget of over $1.5 million. Hitchcock, the director, had spent so much time in story development and production that he never made the second movie for which Zanuck had contracted him. Some suggest he deliberately dragged his feet since he made the same weekly salary whether he directed one movie for them or two. Zanuck's major concern was length. He badgered Hitchcock to cut the movie, insisting it would come in at almost three hours. Hitchcock insisted it would be about one hour and 30 minutes. Since Hitchcock was shooting in sequence, it was easy to cut the movie as they went along. As soon as Zanuck saw the first complete reel, he was satisfied and trusted Hitchcock. In The Dark Side of Genius, Donald Spoto recounted how she would climb a ladder daily to reach the tank where filming took place. She never wore underwear, receiving ovations from the crew. Advised of this, Sir Alfred Hitchcock commented, I don't know if this is a matter for the costume department, makeup, or hairdressing. Hitchcock called in Ben Heck to read the final script and rewrite the ending. It's the only movie Hitchcock made for 20th Century Fox under Daryl F. Zanuck at the time, being barred by Fox while under contract with producer David O. Selznick. Despite finding success in big cities, the movie faced difficulties in smaller places and the countryside causing it to lose money. Dalula Bankhead, picked by Hitchcock for her uniqueness, played Connie Porter. He used four boats, two whole and two split in half to get different camera shots. The contrast between city scenes and peaceful countryside scenes highlighted the story's depth. Also, having Bankhead's mysterious presence against the vast sea added tension and complexity to her character. The play of light and shadow expertly captured by the camera person created suspense in each scene. Despite the challenges, Lifeboat showcases Hitchcock's skill as a director and storyteller, gripping audiences with its intense tale of survival and tough choices. During filming, the cast faced harsh conditions, leading to health issues. Talula Bankhead and Mary Anderson fell ill, while Hume Cronin suffered cracked ribs. Production paused twice for recovery. In the German version, maintaining tension was a challenge. Willie pretended to be Dutch, shifting conversations to Dutch to balance English speakers and the porters. John Steinbeck criticized Hitchcock's treatment of Joe Spencer as racist. Despite these challenges, the film's narrative remained compelling, drawing audiences into the intense drama unfolding aboard the lifeboat. The struggles faced by the characters mirrored the real-life difficulties encountered during wartime. The director's ability to capture the essence of human resilience amidst adversity was commendable, cementing the film's status as a classic in cinematic history. During the production of the movie, the cast faced challenges like motion sickness and pneumonia due to constant exposure to cold water. Taula Bankhead, known for her strong political views, clashed with co-star Walter Slezak over his Austrian background and his role as a Nazi character in the film. Bankhead's fierce hatred of Axis powers led to heated exchanges on set, even when Italy surrendered during filming. Walter Slezak's hope for an early end to the war was met with Bankhead's vehement disdain. Despite the tensions, they continued to work together on the film. In a unique cinematic challenge, director Alfred Hitchcock faced a dilemma in making his signature cameo for the film. Originally intending to play a dead body floating from the sunken ship past the lifeboat, Hitchcock feared sinking himself. Instead, he found a safer solution by featuring a newspaper diet ad in the scene. Canada Lee, initially signed for an adaptation of George Gershwin's opera Porgy and Bess, faced a change of plans in 1943. The project got cancelled due to conflicts with intended leads Paul Robeson and Lena Horne. As a result, Lee took on a role in Lifeboat for 20th Century Fox. Hitchcock's insistence on shooting the movie in sequence posed a financial challenge. 
Insisting it was crucial for the unconventional narrative, he pushed for paying the actors and actresses for the entire shoot, despite studio head Daryl F. Sanek's objections. This commitment to narrative integrity resulted in a compelling and distinctive film experience. In the midst of World War II's chaotic battle of the Atlantic, a remarkable story unfolds, chronicling the struggles between the German Kriegsmarine and the Allied forces. This gripping tale involves Great Britain, Commonwealth States, and eventually the United States. During filming, a notable cast member caused quite a stir with her unconventional wardrobe choices. Her lack of undergarments became a point of contention for the crew, particularly during scenes requiring her ascent on a ladder into the set. However, director Alfred Hitchcock addressed the issue with his trademark humor, showing his characteristic wit. Behind the scenes, the director employed practical methods to maintain visual interest. With a clipboard and legal pad in hand, he made quick compositional changes, ensuring the movie remained visually engaging. In the harsh realities of war, in the confined space of the setting, the film emerges as a testament to the director's creative vision, navigating both the challenges of the conflict and the quirks of its cast. In 2014, Mary Anderson, who portrayed Alice McKenzie, became the last surviving cast member of the movie. Shot entirely on a confined set within a studio tank, the boat's movement was a priority for Sir Alfred Hitchcock. Insisting on realism, he ensured the boat never remained still, adding ocean mist and fog using oil forced through dry ice. When questioned about the absence of a musical score, Hitchcock reasoned that the audience wouldn't discern its source in the vastness of the ocean. Composer David Raskin retorted, suggesting Hitchcock explain the origin of the camera, stating he would then reveal where the music comes from. In the 1944 movie, the cast faced unique experiences during its making. Canada Lee, who played Joe Spencer, had the unusual privilege of writing his own lines. This allowed him to contribute his own touch to the character, adding a personal dimension to the film. Tala the Bankhead, another key figure in the movie, caught pneumonia during the production. In a gesture of appreciation, director Alfred Hitchcock gifted her a puppy, which he had aptly named Hitchcock. This act showcased Hitchcock's gratitude for Bankhead's resilience and professionalism during the challenging filming process. Interestingly, promotional artwork for the film depicted the cast, but Canada Lee's face was notably absent from the movie posters. However, he did appear in a full group shot on one of the lobby cards, offering a visual representation of the ensemble cast. These anecdotes shed light on the behind-the-scenes dynamics of Lifeboat, revealing instances of creative freedom, camaraderie, and unique promotional choices among the cast and crew. In a tragic turn of events, one of the cast members of the 1944 movie Lifeboat, Tallulah Bankhead, suffered a personal loss during filming. Her younger brother, William Brockman Bankhead Jr., a lieutenant in the United States Marine Corps, was killed in action during World War II. Despite her grief, Talula Bankhead continued with her performance, demonstrating remarkable professionalism and dedication to her craft. This poignant detail adds a layer of depth to the production, reminding viewers of the sacrifices made during wartime and the resilience of those affected.